Okay, so I'm back with this rebuild project. Um, I've done a bit of cleaning on the parts, haven't fully cleaned them up yet, but uh, just enough to do a visual inspection. And I just want to check that everything is in spec um, before I start buying components and putting it back together. So the first thing is just do a visual inspection. And a couple things showed up doing that. And I'll see if I can uh, show you this here. But you can see these kind of horizontal lines on the bearing journals. And, and I understand that those are chatter marks. And they're, you can't even catch your fingernail on them, but they, they show up. So I think... I think it's okay. I think I'll use some uh, bearing retaining compound, like a Loctite 620 or something similar um, when I put it back together. But yeah, it's kind of interesting. So um, I'm curious what caused that and I might have an idea, but so that's one thing that showed up. The other thing I noticed once I started cleaning the carbon off this piston was that something was bouncing around in there and uh, gouged it up and scored it up and so that wasn't great so that usually means that at the very least I need to do a hone which I would have done anyways but maybe more damage was done than that so wasn't super excited to see that and you can see that it uh, dinged up the inside of the head it's not too bad there I can clean that up with a uh, sandpaper or Dremel and get that smooth again the other side piston and head are fine uh, so the next thing I want to check is whether or not the bore is okay. And, and visually, and like the fingernail check, I, there's no scratches deep enough that I can catch my fingernail. So that was good to see. But I need to measure with a bore gauge and just see whether this cylinder is in spec. So we'll do that next. Okay, so here's what the manual says about taking the cylinder bore measurements. There's six different dimensions. So one and two are at the top, three and four are at the middle, five and six are at the bottom, and they're 90 degrees from one another. It doesn't specify which direction is which relative to the cylinder head, but I just went with D1 being front to back and D2 being side to side, just because all these measurements have you subtracting the D1, 3, and 5 dimensions from the other ones. And those ones are the ones that are going to get worn the most because the, the that's the direction the connecting rod travels. So those those are going to be the bigger numbers usually. So, so you take those, you make sure that they're within the wear limit. So for a stock piston, the wear limit is 60.1. So one, or sorry, 0.1 millimeters over the standard size. And then there's some calculations to do to find the cylinder taper and out of round. And bring in here, I have taken those measurements and jotted them down here. So the procedure is take the cylinder. There is a special tool to do this, but I just have these bore gauges. So you can kind of tighten this up and it keeps these two, uh, spring-loaded ex extendable things here locked and so you can bring it down put it in your position let it go and then you just want to get it as square as you can both front to back and end elevation so just try and make this straight up and down then you lock you lock this you can bring it out now normally you use a micrometer to measure this but I my microm my mic micrometer is only two inches in throat depth so I'm just using this caliper and I don't think I took that measurement right but anyways these are the measurements I got when I did this and so you can see that if my wear limit is 60.1 I'm kind of on it all over the place here and so that kind of tells me that I might need to bore these cylinders out to the next size piston over and then even my out of round sorry let's start with the taper 0 0.05 millimeters I'm over that in both cases and the out of round 
is 0 0.01 millimeters and again uh, quite a bit over that so I think I'm looking at needing to bore these out to accept one over pistons and so I wasn't expecting that I just the cylinders look good enough I didn't think I'd have to do that so it's a bit of a downer but I think that's the proper thing to do it, it, assuming I did all this right but I think I did now the other thing is you can measure the piston itself and so you take the measurement right here about 10 mils up from the bottom of the skirt and that's what these dimensions are up here and those are also out of spec I can be anywhere from 59.94 up to 60 and both of mine are low so it means the pistons are worn out too so no point doing the piston clearance measurements or anything like that because all this stuff's going to get replaced so when I get the new stuff then I can do the the clearance um, measure the side clearance for the rings and the end gap that's probably the most important but can't do that yet so next thing to measure and to check is the crankshaft so I'll set that up next okay so next I want to check the run out in the crankshaft and so it gives a bit of a procedure here it says it's to support the outside bearings with V blocks now they're different size bearings so if you had a set of V blocks the, the crankshaft would be on an angle so what I did is I 3d printed two that uh, match the diameter of the OD of the bearings so that the crankshaft is level it, yeah anyways you, you probably need adjustable V blocks if you're gonna do it with purchased ones and then you just set your dial indicator on the outer portions of the crankshaft and then the inner two bearings and get your measurements so I'll bring you in and uh, show you what I get for those yeah I tried to get the camera as in line with the dial indicator as possible so you can see the measurements clearly and I have this kind of as far out on PTO side as I can the diagram has this flip but the the values are the same for either end and the inside one so it shouldn't matter which way this is and then if I spin this that's better part of three thousandths I would say so that is out of spec I think I'm allowed about 1.6 so with the next bearing and this one barely moves maybe a half a thou so that's pretty interesting especially when I consider this one ends up being quite a bit more so I don't know how that happens so again about two thou there and barely anything over there maybe one thou but that's within spec so I got a I got to mark where it's high and low and try and figure out if I can uh, adjust this a little bit and, and make that better I'm not too sure how that goes it seems like it's a lot easier to do if you only have one connecting rod because then it's just a matter of flaring this in and out or twisting it on the pin but I got to figure out how to make sense of the measurements when you know there's a bunch of different ways I could adjust it so it looks like it's a little out of spec I don't know if it's enough to be worried about but I'm gonna try and tweak it but anyways that's the run out dimensions okay the next thing I want to check is the small end free play and that's just how much the connecting rod can wiggle back and forth on that big end bearing so I'm just gonna pull it all the way this way and push it that way Looks like 40 thousandths, under 40 thousandths. 
and we're allowed two millimeters or 0 0.08 inches. So that puts us at 0 0.04 inches. So that's within spec. The next thing I want to check is the side clearance on the big end. So you're allowed between 0.25 and 0.75 millimeters gap here. And so I have 0.7 millimeters and it does not fit in there. And that's true for both of these. It's getting close there, but doesn't quite fit. So those are within spec. The other thing we could check is you can put the needle bearing and wrist pin in here and just check for free play in both the connecting rod and the piston, but we're going to be replacing those components, so I won't do that yet. The last thing I can check for is cylinder head warpage. You just lay a straight edge across the bolt holes in the square direction and then diagonally, and you just take a uh, Make sure you can't fit a 0 0.03 millimeter feeler gauge underneath that straight edge. The smallest one I have is 0 0.04, so that's what I'll use, but probably good enough. And so, I've already done this. I know it's okay, but you would just lay it across and just make sure that your gauge can't fit underneath there. Anywhere. And if it can... Then you just have to uh, lap this on a surfacing plate or something like that just with some sandpaper and i'll probably do that anyways just to clean this up um but yeah they don't seem to be warped so i think that's it for now i need to decide what i'm going to do with these jugs make some calls see if i can get these bored out locally otherwise i might be looking for another set to get this put back together with the standard side size pistons um, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if I missed anything. Thanks for watching.